So you guys have been asking about SoundHound, so let's get right to it. Don't smash the like button or the subscribe button just yet. And I've got the information coming up on coaching and the Discord, but I want you guys to put your thinking caps on, listen up, sit tight. Also going to show you guys a really good trade to print stupid money on SoundHound for earnings. So you're not going to want to miss that. So sit tight. Let's dive right into SoundHound. Analyst for Wedbush, Dan Ives, has been very bullish on this stock. Guys, SoundHound is going to be one of the biggest investments of 2025. And let's dive right in. And I'm going to read you guys exactly what Dan Ives has said. So here's what Dan Ives had to say on one account. Overall, we believe this was another major step in the right direction for SoundHound as we view the Amelia acquisition as a strategic move by significantly expanding the company's reach into new large TAM markets while notably expanding its growth trajectory with stable revenue pillars across automotive revenue restaurant and strong monetization capabilities to capture demand from enterprises across industries. Dan Ives has had a buy rating on SoundHound of $9. And then just a few weeks later, Dan Ives said something else surrounding SoundHound. SoundHound AI delivered revenue and earnings beats as it continues to see demand for voice AI products pick up across its automotive and restaurant segments, signing various large brand deals, fueling growth while grabbing market share in the convention. Conventional AI markets, I've said. The company also announced plans to acquire Amelia for 80 million in cash and equity, an enterprise AI software company which has 45 plus million in reoccurring AI software revenue that will improve SoundHound's position within voice and conventional AI while expanding into new verticals such as retail, financial services, healthcare, smart devices, and more. Not only what Dan Ives is saying supports the fact that SoundHound is a good small cap and up and coming growth stock, analyst Gil Luria gave SoundHound a $9.50 buy rating very recently. SoundHound also partnered with Stellantis, which makes all of the Dodge vehicles here in the United States. So we're going to eventually see SoundHound make its way into Dodge vehicles. A while back, they acquired All Set for restaurant and voice ordering. And there's always that looming potential of Wendy's and McDonald's that SoundHound could eventually work with them or other restaurants as they're already really deep into the restaurant space as it is. The $80 million Amelia acquisition has been projected for future guidance to bring in $150 plus million in revenue in the year 2025. This is going to be a huge year for SoundHound. And with the elections coming up in just about four weeks from now and all the uncertainty, the market could pull back or run or be very volatile. It's really hard to say, but a pullback is highly likely. SoundHound is already retreated from $5 to $4.60. This is the time to buy. If it dips more, buy the dip dollar cost average because we already know after the elections, it's highly likely the stock market's going to recover and start to run even more than it already is. Tom Lee has projected a price target on SPY of 580 plus, which means there's still a lot of room to go and SoundHound is going to run in sympathy parallel with nvidia and it's already starting to run so it wouldn't be very shocking to see soundhound reach 550 or six dollars by the new year's especially since they have earnings coming up in november and they've missed on the previous four earnings if they meet or beat this expectation after the elections going into the new year soundhound could run and 2025 is going to be much better than 2024 was and considering 2024, SoundHound is up 117% year to date and 144% in one year, meaning this time last year to now 144% gain for SoundHound. SoundHound's revenue has grown 80% year over year. There's 15 hedge funds that currently hold SoundHound. NVIDIA has $3.7 million invested with 1.7 million plus shares. And we also have to talk about something else, which is the fact that there is a 51% upside potential, according to multiple analysts. And we also have to take a look at the PE ratio on SoundHound. So if we look at the price to sales on SoundHound of six, it puts the company in the area of 20 to $35 just based on that metric alone of course it's not an ironclad metric it doesn't mean that that's exactly where it's going to go or should be a hundred percent but just 
rough estimate, that's where you'd expect the price to be on a stock with a price to sales like that. If they continue down the path that they're going right now, SoundHound will achieve a stock price of 10 to $12. And to be quite honest, PMI data comes out even better in November and December. Earnings are good in November. And after the elections, SoundHound is very likely to run. And 2025 is going to be a great year with over 150 million of additional revenue from the most recent acquisitions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. I'm going to show you guys what's going on with SoundHound and how you can sell puts to get into the stock. And these are trades that I gave to my Discord. My students in the Discord have taken these trades on SoundHound. They've been adding to the position, dollar cost averaging. If you guys want to be a part of this group and take these trade alerts and be profitable and take control of your financial freedom, I would love to help you guys out. You can see the profits on the screen from multiple students. Over the past couple of months, I have students that have turned 8,000 into 20,000. Other students that have went from 300K to 400K. It doesn't matter the size of your portfolio or your experience or where you live. I would love to help you regardless. You guys can sign up at any time at investwithcorey.com. The link is right there in the bottom underneath this video. I've had some people say that they didn't know how to get to the website or navigate in the correct location. You guys can click on case studies. If you go to investwithcorey.com, you can see all my testimonials of students that have made profits in the discord. And you're going to want to click on training. This video on training explains everything so you can understand exactly how you can take control of your financial freedom. And I don't have time to explain this right now in this video, so I don't wanna waste your time now. At your convenience, you can watch this video and book a call with my team and I so that we can help you grow your portfolio. I look forward to speaking with you guys and helping you achieve your financial freedom. So we're looking at SoundHound Financials and I've done this before. I've explained to you guys that the total assets versus liabilities is very good on SoundHound. Their net debt is 200 million in the negative, which means they have $200 million in cash. And right now they're kind of lacking a bit in their operational activities income. And their income statement is not the greatest, but they have 55 million in trailing 12 month revenue. But in 2025, they're looking at going to 150 plus million in revenue. So they're looking at tripling their revenue in 2025. This is really good. SoundHound has the potential to make big strides in 2025, especially if they get more contracts, more partnerships, and they keep growing and expanding the way they are. When we look at the chart, we can see that we're forming a wedge pattern right now and SoundHound and there's a breakout that could be happening at any moment. It pretty much lines up with earnings and the elections. If I was to draw this line and extend it a little bit more and this other line here just a little bit right there, we are kind of working our way into a wedge pattern somewhere between here and here. Anything could happen. It's still consolidating. So I anticipate somewhere in the next week, week and a half, we could see a little bit more of a dip, which is why I drew this green line. And if this happens, we are looking at getting back in at $4 because on earnings, if they meet the expectations, it's going to run pretty decently. And if they beat, it is going to fly probably up to seven and change, especially after the elections. I would honestly anticipate that somewhere as we get closer to January over here, the stock is going to be somewhere in this area between $6 and $8.50. This is going to be the price target area if they meet or beat the earnings. If PMI data is also good, and everything else goes well between now and mid-December. If everything else goes well with PMI data and the elections as we get through November, SoundHound is highly likely to run, especially with sympathy on NVIDIA. And next year, I really truly believe that if they can have good earnings in the first quarter and the second quarter of 2025 and start generating revenue and beat the earnings estimates, by next summer, we could see SoundHound in the 12 to $15 range. And this pretty much illustrates a 3X return in as little is six to eight months. It could be even more than that, but that's really where I see it. Dan Ives already gave it a price target of $9 by the end of the year. So that shows that we're only going to be three to $6 away from that price target by six months later in the summer of 2025. If you guys are looking to get into SoundHound and you want to sell puts, you can do that. I have 2,000 shares in this portfolio. I also have 10,000 shares in my large portfolio. If you guys want to sell puts, you guys can sell them. I would go two weeks out, maybe three weeks to October 25th, and I would sell $4.50 puts because really I don't care if I get more shares at $4.50. This is very good premium. So we're going to click on sell the put, and you're going to see that there's a delta of 37, which is fairly aggressive, but I don't care. 
and you shouldn't either. 450 is a great price. I would probably sell maybe 10 of these contracts to collect $129. Of course, it's 4,000 bucks, but I'm going to collect $130. If I don't get assigned, it's free money. If I do get assigned, then my average cost is going to be $4.37, which is very good. If you want to get more premium and sell puts, you can go out to the earnings date or close to earnings and sell the 450 put for $19, or you can go to November 8th, which is after the earnings, and this will get you $26. And if they beat earnings or even meet the earnings estimate, then you're highly unlikely to get assigned. And this is basically free money. So we could get about 30 four cents for this, especially, or 33, especially if the price drops. Selling 10 of these contracts would get $330 on 4,000. This is an 8% return in one month. This is very good. Soundhound is highly unlikely to drop below 450 if they meet or beat the earnings. And even if they just barely meet the earnings estimate or even slightly miss it, it's unlikely to go far below $4.50 as the floor is really 390. So with $26 per put, actually we're getting $33 per put, the average cost is four. So even if it dropped to $4, you're barely out any money on selling these puts. This is a very strong position. If you are more bullish on the stock like I am, I might even sell the $5 put and you could probably get about $90 for this put, maybe 85. So selling 10 of these would generate $900 on 4,000. This is a 25% return. So if you're very bullish on SoundHound like I am, I would highly recommend thinking about the $5 put going a month out. It's a 25% return, giving you an average cost of $4.10. If you don't get assigned, again, it's free money. This is honestly what I would do. This is a very good play for SoundHound. I would definitely be looking to add a position in SoundHound in your portfolio. If you have already, then I would definitely add to it and dollar cost average as SoundHound is going to run pretty strong near the end of the year. And it's likely that it's gonna continue this trend into 2025 as they're already up 144% in a year and 117.8% year to date, which is crazy. So this trend is likely to continue, but with all risks, you want to make sure to have a good handle on your position size. So I highly recommend keeping your position size between five to 10% of your total portfolio. But again, it's your money. You guys have to do your own due diligence and make sure you are not entering into positions that are too large for your portfolio. And I teach a lot of this to my students as well. So if you guys are interested in joining the training course, the discord and the one-on-one -on -one coaching, I would love to help you guys. Limited spots remain. You guys can sign up at any time, investwithcorey.com right down the screen. Links in the information box below. That's it for this video, guys. I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves.